In order to tell this story, we're going to have to go back in time to the USSR. Lithuania was under foreign occupation. Under USSR rule, the area known as Usipus was neglected and soon became stricken with poverty and crime. This, however, would later become one of the main factors of Usipus independence. And so, on the 1st of April 1997, the Republic of Usipus was born. Good morning, everyone. It's a cold, cold, cold day here in Lithuania. We're currently in Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania, and today we've got an exciting video for you. We're going to be visiting a country that doesn't exist. So, let's get straight into it. Right behind me is the sign for the Independent Republic of Usipus. So once you cross over this bridge, you enter Usipus. As you can see there, blowing in the wind is actually the flag of Usipus. Let's cross over and let's enter this country that doesn't exist. Fun fact about the flags is that they actually have four. They have one for every season of the year and it changes colour. I'm officially in a country that doesn't exist. Welcome to Usipus, or the Independent Republic of Usipus. This country declared independence on the 1st of April, which is known in part of the world as April Fool's Day. It's a bit of a joke day. So a lot of people consider the Republic of Usipus to be a tongue-in-cheek country, one created as more of a joke. But I'm here to find out exactly how serious of a country this is and I'm gonna try and find out what some of the locals think about it but before all that I haven't had any breakfast so I need to find somewhere to eat so let's go get some local Usipus cuisine so I found like a little restaurant bar and I've got myself this I don't really know what it is to be honest with you some rice and some pasta potato maybe or something and then I've got myself a green tea I think this might be like a local dish so I'm gonna eat this and then we're gonna explore some more one thing about Uspus that it's really known for is its culture of art Uspus is so well known for its art because it became a massive breeding ground for artists artists from all over the place started moving here because housing was so cheap because of the relative poverty that has occurred here under the USSR. This meant that creatives could come here and pay very little to live here whilst focusing on doing their art. So now I'm on the way to a place called the Art Incubator, which is like a gallery for different types of art. I think they have an outdoor area for sculptures and other pieces of art. So that's currently where I'm headed. Well, I mean, it doesn't look like it's open. I think this is the door. Nope. I thought this was the door. Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. Maybe, maybe it's just shut. Because the art gallery is closed, I'm currently just having a little walk, walking from one side of the country to the other, which really doesn't take that long because it's only a kilometre squared, so I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes maybe. Not much. I'm just really just trying to find stuff to do. Up to now, seen a few little art shops, but apart from that, not really seeing much else to do. Although, obviously, seeing the sculpture in the centre which was like the angel of Usipus. I've just been in a supermarket then just to buy some fruit and one thing that I've realised quite quickly in Lithuania is that the apples are absolutely massive. Like look at the size of that, it's, it's huge. This is Tibetan Square. As you can see, this is a bit of construction going on. So that's a bit of a shame. This wall is full of Usipus constitutions, 
and every year a new one is printed in a different language and put on the wall. As you can see, there's quite a lot there already. Some of these constitutions as well just don't really make that much sense. Some of them are kind of um, contradictory to each other. For example, 40 and 41. Do not fight back, and then fourth one is do not surrender. On the 1st of April, every year, Uspa celebrates its Independence Day. And on that day, when you cross the border, you can get your passport stamped. Any other day, you can get it stamped from the gift shop. Now, I'm not going to get my passport stamped because it can cause some problems when you're crossing borders. Some countries will refuse entry. However, I'm going to go into the gift shop and I'm going to see if I can buy something that's like a bit of paper and see if I can get that stamped. So Uspis is known like a separate republic, but of course officially it's not. It's just a joke and this yeah. joke started 20 years ago at the 1st of April. That's very important. It's not like a Catalonia. <laughs> it's more like Christiania, but uh, whatever. That's a part or of Or like Sealand. Have you heard of Sealand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In Soviet times, this place was one of the most dangerous. And the street, which is called the street of Uzhepa now, uh, it was called the street of death. And it was really dangerous because of people. It was not a very good region to live in. And people usually wanted to move from Uzhepa somewhere, yeah. like in a block house, to have a warm water, a normal toilet inside. And uh, that's the point about the constitution. There is written that everybody has the right to have a, a hot water. Yeah. And a, and so that's because food. of it. Yeah. So you have your own president, don't you? We have a president, yeah. we have a currency. Our currency is Can you get the currency here? I don't have because I sold out all of it. Uh, so can <laughs> you actually can, can you actually spend it? You can spend it, but only oh. one day in the year. Only on the 1st of April? Yeah, exactly. Only at the 1st of April. And you can buy only two things. You can buy beer or coffee. <laughs> okay. So one euro uras is one normal euro. Euro, yeah. So I'm going to get a postcard stamped because I don't want to get my passport stamped. So, and the hand, that's the symbol of Uzhepis. Because, you know, in ancient times when people show their pants, that means they don't have any guns, they are open and friendly and not dangerous. But in Uzhepis, this hand has a hole. Yeah. It's like a hole. A hole means, uh, like, transparency, democracy, and other blah blahs. But <laughs> there is another unofficial meaning. It means that people are working hard in Uzhepis, but they don't have money. Yeah. So it's like a hole in their hand. Maria was really nice speaking to me, telling me loads about Usapus. I also wanted to buy some money because they do have a currency, their own currency that you can use on the 1st of April. But she had none left, so she's told me to go to another shop because they might have some there. Even though I can't spend it, but I, I like collecting um, money when I go to different places. I got one. I got a Us Euro, as it's called. The woman charged me five euros for it, so I feel like I've been scammed a little bit because this is tied to the euro. So on um, on the Independence Day, this is worth one euro and you can't spend it. Apparently only on beer and coffee though. So the fact that I got charged five euros seems like a bit of a scam, but oh well. Only going to be here once. It's quite cool. It has an angel on it. The angel of Usapus. Now I'm gonna head over to the art incubator because according to Google, it's open. It only opened at 12 and I probably went there about 11. So that's probably why. Hopefully this is open this time. Absolute nightmare, just been speaking to a local and he said it's closed for the winter now. He said it won't be open again until next year, which is so annoying because like the one time I come, it isn't open. And like Maria said, everywhere, is a little bit quiet, a little bit dead because of current restrictions. So I feel like I'm not getting the full like feeling of the place. Not even just Usopus, but Vilnius in general, like Vilnius. It was just so dead when I landed last night. It was literally like a ghost town. There was nothing open everywhere, shut at like 11, apart from bars. But <laughs> I was hungry, I wanted food. So that was a bit of a letdown. Well. On that disappointing note, it is actually time to end the video. I am going to an outro film for you because I did roll this on to the next day and I was exploring Vilnius more. But after watching some of the footage, I decided to just keep this separate and make this its own video. As always, make sure you like the video, 
comment below what you enjoyed about it and if you didn't enjoy it comment why and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and as always keep exploring